Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In recent videos I pondered the possibility of a nuclear third stage for Saturn V as well as for an enlarged starship. Uh, so in that case just a stage inside the starship that would accommodate other payloads. And I have decided to formalize that idea in the form of the Fuji stage. Uh, Fuji can also be rendered as 22 in Japanese and so we are going with that sort of system again. Uh, but yes, the Fuji stage, I'm aware that there's a Fuji spacecraft possibility floating out there but uh, this seemed like a better use of the name. Uh, anyway, the Fuji stage is rather complicated so we have a lot of things to test out here. And uh, for instance, we do have radiators that extend like that. And we've got the normal NASA, let me just close this for a sec, NASA NTP architecture uh, nuclear engines. So they're, they're very weak, uh, 111 kilonewtons only, uh, 875 seconds of ISP. So, and their mass is 3.32 tons. So very conservative on that. Uh, the thrust weight ratio, very low. Uh, commensurate with the old NERVA thing, right? NERVA was about 300 kilonewtons and about 10 tons. Uh, so same same deal. Uh, so yeah, that is as conservative as, as it gets. And because people objected to us lighting nuclear engines uh, without making orbit first, we will not light them in order to make orbit. The goal here is to use our auxiliary propulsion system here uh, in order to finish orbit. So the second stage of Saturn V will get us close, but uh, down here, this bottom part of the tank, you know, this the rest of this tank is the hydrogen tank. Uh, and then we've got some supplementary tanks here. I intended this for, uh, it, I intended this to be a hypergolic sort of auxiliary propulsion system and I might implement that later. But for now, they are there to contain the boil off hydrogen gas, should there be any, even though we have radiators. Uh, so they'll contain the hydrogen boil off and then we can cool it because this also has a cooler. This has a cryo cooler built in and also oxygen cooling. And so the bottom bit down here is oxygen so that we can use these engines here. So there's RCS thrusters, but there's also these very small engines that will be hydrogen oxygen engines that will complete orbit for us instead of using the NTP engines in order to complete orbit. But the catch to that is that these tiny little engines, of course, can't do that very quickly. They deliver 539 meters per second in 17 minutes. So yeah, we, we, we can't really get them to do that quickly. So we'll see whether it's possible to make this work out for us. On the bright side, we're not carrying any heavy fairings, right? This is just a tank on top here. So that is the positive side. And I'll shut down the radiator for now. Uh, where did the radiator go? I, I hope it stays there somehow. Anyway, uh, if it turns out that this version of the Saturn V doesn't uh, work well for this, we can upgrade the engines. Right now we're not using F1As or J2Ss or anything like that. This is just Saturn V as it was at the end of the Apollo program. And so we'll see whether it can launch this huge stage or not. I mean, it's physically huge. It's just uh, it doesn't have that much mass. Uh, this is lying to us. Let's get the numbers proper. Uh, so, um, there's... Oh, I needed to fill that up. Shoot. So there's a 132 ton stage. Of course, the hydrogen and oxygen, which is the gas, uh, is empty because that's just to hold the gas from the boil off. And then there's also water here. That's for the fuel cell because we have a fuel cell using the hydrogen and oxygen in order to provide power. We don't have solar panels here right now. And so we are going to have water left over. And we have a way to contain that just in case. Okay, and so, yeah, we are fully fueled right now, right? Okay, retract. All right, hopefully everything is good. And we are going to test it. There's a lot going on here. Like I said, the RCS thrusters on here run off of just the liquid hydrogen. So they're basically cold gas thrusters. They only operate at 260 seconds of ISP. So that's sort of a downside, but it's more convenient than carrying the hypergolic system, though I might make a hypergolic version of this. And this isn't really a third stage third stage right now because there's no way to put payload on top of it. It's really 
a pusher stage so we'll get this into orbit and it'll push something else but I'll create a new version that is cut off about here and then can accommodate a fairing with a mission as long as we're above the RCS line that should be alright so I'll modify the model to do that but we'll test this for now that will be a relatively easy change and we will do so at launch complex 39b but let me just make sure it remembers that alright this is also meant for Starship it should fit in the 12 meter starship, not the 9 meter starship, unfortunately. Uh oh, uh oh, it's uh, it's time to top off the hydrogen gas. Uh oh, no, no, uh, and it topped off the oxygen gas. We don't want any of that. Okay, this is just getting this to orbit. SAS on, throttle up. Oh, right, I don't have the throttle set on this. It's gonna be fun. All right, well, we can still test it. I got a new joystick, so things have changed. Anyway, ignition. And launch. It's sort of a unit here. Those wires, though. If you remember, this was somewhat based on just using the S2 stage as an upper stage hydrogen tank but modified so that we could fit it into Starship, uh, the 12 meter Starship. This could also be used for the Kasei rocket or for SLS. It is launcher agnostic, as a matter of fact. At least in theory, we'll have to test that out. Stage set, and ignition. Double check, okay, skirt set. I think we're pretty good for orbit actually. Maybe we could put some more in. It's all a matter of, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, what proportion we actually use of the volume. Right now I think I set to 87% basically. That's how much of the available volume we're using. We could up that a little bit. We can unlock the boil-off tanks to see if we get any boil-off. We are getting some hydrogen boil-off, we can see there. We haven't deployed the radiators or activated them. There is plenty of spare volume in here. Um, even with the 87%, I left out about 50,000 liters of potential liquid oxygen in the bottom bin. Because I didn't want to burn for an hour, so... yeah. The reason I opted for fuel cells is because, well, we are carrying the hydrogen and oxygen already. And overall, I didn't think that... I mean, this will be hanging out in Earth orbit and it's not going very far, so we'll be able to check up on it. It'll be sending payloads to high orbit or escape and then coming back down for refueling. That's always been my basic R NTR plan, or NTP plan, by the way. Uh, nuclear thermal rocket plan. Why do we need fuel cells when we have nuclear engines? Because, well, uh, they aren't bimodal. The nuclear engines are not expected to provide electric power like that. Okay, uh, so that'll deorbit. We've got plenty of time to apoapsis. Let us decouple. Let us deploy. Extend. Activate. Radiator. Let us deploy. Extend. Activate. Radiator. Okay. And let me just make sure we have a dummy stage here. That should have activated the RCS thrusters as well. Yeah. And RCS on. And rotation. Uh, I'm not seeing the forward RC, uh, the ones that are supposed to push us forward working, these guys back here. Engines? Okay, well the engines work. Uh, but why... Those, those RCS up there work. These down here don't work. That's a little bit weird. Well, 
I was always anticipating the need to figure something out. So we will see. Um, I'll, let's go into daylight again and see the nose cap jettison. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, we're going back into the atmosphere. Um, nose cap jettison, please. I couldn't see it. Okay, let's hope it's jettisoned. Uh, we didn't blow up anyway. Uh, okay, orbit prograde. Uh, this is not a good time. Wow. Okay, ambient light, please. I I don't really know whether the radiators are actually doing anything. We do have boil off, and our surplus hydrogen gas tanks are catching hydrogen. So are, so is the oxygen tank. It's got some boil off too. Okay, well we've technically made orbit. We probably don't need as much fuel for the hydrolox system, so maybe we could trade off some of the hydrogen. Uh, sorry, the oxygen for some hydrogen. Okay, well let's get into daylight, but clearly we need to fix the bottom RCS thrusters. I don't know what's happened with those. So here it is in more visible terms. The upper ones aren't great for turning all on their own. 129 tons in orbit, by the way. Well, let's see if I can do stuff. So, activate the cryo cooler. Yeah, that's using up the hydrogen and producing the liquid ox. Uh, sorry, using up the hydrogen and producing the liquid hydrogen. And so now it's converting. We should not see any increase to our vessel mass. If there is, then that would be wrong. But it's using electric charge in order to do that. Which, uh, I think these engines are producing electric charge even though they shouldn't. I'll have to modify them. And also, the oxygen can be converted back to liquid oxygen too. Okay, hopefully it's alright. These are only 400 Newton RCS thrusters, so... We definitely need the bottom ones working if this is going to move around well. Okay, so let me try and fix the RCS thrusters and then we'll try this on the on the Starship. We'll see if it can fit in the Starship properly and see if it works out. The 12 meter Starship, of course. Okay, well, as far as the 12 meter diameter Starship, it looks like maybe I'm going to have to make it a little bit taller if we're gonna fit this in. Uh, yeah, it's not quite working out here. Um, this stage could be made a little bit fatter, but then it won't fit the Saturn V very well. I mean, it'll be bigger than the S2 stage, which isn't ideal. Right now it's the exact diameter of the S2 stage, which could be a good thing. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're bit messed up here. At least we don't need the nose cap for this version when it's inside Starship, but yeah, it's not going to be able to clear the back end either because if we extend the radiator there, um, yeah, I, well, I don't know. Uh, the collider might not work out with that adapter, basically. So, especially the collider is on the radiators themselves. So, Yes, we'll try SLS instead, maybe, and I'll have to work on this. The ITS Starship really only has one purpose, and that's to launch this. Uh, after all, we don't need a 12-meter Starship for anything else except for, except for a hydrogen stage. So anyway, uh, we'll hold off on this, and we still need to test the RCS ports. We could cheat it up, but I might as well try out another launch, and we'll do it with SLS. Okay, so here's the Fuji on EUS. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be reading the Delta V in any useful way. Uh, we've got the thing fully fueled and all, and if we take this off for a sec, uh, we see that's 141 tons. I think we should probably underfuel liquid oxygen. EUS could basically get us, to, I mean, it needs to be able to get us 
very close to orbit. We just need a little bit to finish things off and run the fuel cell. So maybe I'll cut that in the, to a third. So 5,700, uh, 2,850, let's say. It's still 131 tons, which is more than Block 1B's capacity to lower Earth orbit, after all. Hmm. So this might not be... I mean, we might have to underfuel it, is basically what it comes down to, but... Uh, why don't we just try it out and see what happens? Oh, that's rotated wrong. Got sort of an adapter section here. And that's 9.7 tons. Um, I don't suppose we could make that lighter. Uh, I don't think it needs to be 9.7 tons. Can we just do without, you know, do it like this? Uh, let me see. They don't have structural options here. I, I, I'll just put a fuel tank. I bet you that a fuel tank will be lighter. ISO grid structure fuel tank. I mean, what kind of structure are they doing if a fuel tank is going to be lighter, right? I don't get it. There's 2.1 tons. And it could fit, fit fuel in if we wanted to. I didn't even change it to some sort of balloon tank, it's just aluminum. It's just a bunch of aluminum there. So I don't know what the structural bits are for. <laughs> Anyway, that, that'll make it a little bit better, but it's still gonna overburden this quite a lot. Well, let's see what happens. It'd be a lot easier if we could light the nuclear engines, of course, but we're trying not to light the nuclear engines to get to orbit. And... If we were able to light the nuclear engines, then... Oh, maybe it's giving us the right numbers here. Um, if we are able to light the nuclear engines, they give basically the same thrust as the RL-10s on the EUS. So we have four nuclear engines, they give about 111 kilonewtons apiece, and the RL-10s on the EUS give about the same. So, yeah, they would be a fine replacement for the EUS if we could light them to get to orbit, but we can't. So, and the little engines, the Hydrolox engines that we have on the stage are not good enough for getting to orbit at all. Well, except for very last bit. But if we take a look here, it seems like if we sum it all up, we get nearly 10, uh, basically uh, uh, just shy of 10,000 if you take this number and subtract out the nuclear stage. So just shy of 10,000 meters per second. But then again, the thrust weight ratio for the final bit, the 0.2 thrust weight ratio, and the fact that we need to toss it up high in order, it's complicated. So we'll just try it out. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Certainly this is not within engineering margins. Now we are saving the fairing mass, right? There isn't any fairing mass. So as far as the normal estimates for what SLS can do, since we're not, we don't have the fairing or anything, I guess we need a roll program. That probably saves a lot. Okay. And... Booster set. Alright, well... Gonna have to keep some pitch up for a while. I don't know whether underfueling EUS might have been a better idea. It's tough to say. We are asking a lot from the core. Okay, well, we should have plenty of height there. And. But do we have enough time? Oh yes, that sure operated just the way I wanted it to be. Uh, anyway, as long as it didn't kill things. Well, technically we have enough delta V, but we only have three minutes to apoapsis. So, 
probably not going to end up with enough Delta V exactly. We will find out. And Fizz Warp. <laughs> okay, we're getting to the part where we better catch ourselves. And we've hit the atmosphere again. That's not what you want to have happen with the nuclear stage. Okay, separation. And we're in an emergency. We need to uh, go ahead and light the nuclear engine to start it. This is. We'll have to refine this a little bit more later. If we can even survive. Well, I better check out the RCS thrusters while I can. Oh, 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 oh RCS, please. These don't gimbal. Okay. Extend, activate breeder. Yeah, it looks like the rear RCS thrusters are working. We can see some plumes there. Too bad it's in the dark and everything. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we're we're being controlled more by aerodynamics than by we, we can't control ourselves anymore. Okay. Um, oh, and we've lost comms, so I can't even throw down anymore. Right. Well, this is gonna explode. So, not the best start, but. Yeah, we'll have to work on the whole SLS trajectory. I think we had enough Delta V, it's just an extraordinarily heavy load. Maybe we can underfuel it just a little bit as far as the liquid hydrogen is concerned. We were close, darn it. Now we're going retrograde, so that's obviously not gonna work, but I don't have communications to control it anymore. Best thing probably would be to not light the nuclear engines uh, so that the fuel rods probably wouldn't be so bad off if they weren't active. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Do you suppose the radiators can help slow us down enough with their drag? Uh, no, apparently not. Okay, so yes. Not the most suspicious start, at least with the SLS launch. And of course we can't even fit it into Starship properly, I guess. I mean, we need it to be a certain size for it to be logical for other launchers. Though, I guess it's a little bit too big for SLS, so maybe we should undersize it a little bit. I'll look into that. Uh, of course, there's the version that can accommodate a payload on top, and that will be blunter, and so won't clip into the top of the Starship as much. Maybe I can just put that into Starship and that'll be easier. So, I've got a few things to work on. Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, we will not check where we actually spread all the nuclear debris. And we will try to do better next time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.